a lot of times, um, kids especially, they can relate with being rejected, uh, feeling left out, and sometimes even being betrayed, where you may not do anything wrong and your friends will turn on you, something like that. So they might can really relate to this and how Jesus felt and what he went through. Uh, the point of today is that Jesus knew what would happen and he still followed God's plan. So we're going to start off in the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 41, verse 9. Psalm 41, 9. <clears throat> I want to read it uh, a couple of different translations for you. In Psalm 41, 9, in the NIV it says, Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who has shared my bread, has turned against me. And in the King James Version, it says, Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted his heel against me. So, Somebody that you had opened your house to, somebody that you had broke bread with, somebody that you had shared fellowship with, had betrayed you. Now, when David wrote these songs here, um, these psalms, he wrote this one in particular um, because he had had a very close friend who turned his back on him, betrayed him. But it was a type of betrayal where him being the king, he was providing for many of his friends. And when you are providing for somebody and they turn around and betray you, that carries with it a... In the Hebrew language, it indicated a horse being fed, and then as soon as that horse was fed, it turned around and bit the hand that fed it. Now, we've all heard the phrase, don't bite the hand that feeds you, right? That's not... Uh, a Bible verse, even though it sounds like an old proverb. Um, and that's what it is. It's just an old saying. But don't bite the hand that feeds you is, um, is very biblical in, in the sense that when you see the phrase, he has lifted his heel against me, that's what a horse would do when someone feeds them and then they turn around and they kick them as soon as they get done feeding or as soon as they get done brushing or as soon as they get done caring for them. So have you ever felt where you cared for somebody, you provided for somebody, you did something good for somebody, and then they just turned right around and lifted their heel against you? They turned around and kicked you. That's what this whole scripture is about today. That's what this whole lesson is about. Jesus knew that they were going to kick him. He knew that they were going to lift their heel against him. He knew that they were going to betray him, and yet he went through with it anyway. He knew what was going to happen. And yet he still did it. Could you be the type friend or servant or leader to somebody that you knew or you figured they were going to betray you? They were going to turn against you, say something bad about you, uh, maybe uh, say something bad about you to someone else? Would you still serve? Would you still be a friend? Would you still do good? Would you still fellowship? Jesus chose to. And that's an important truth that we need to take away in understanding and teaching the kids who Jesus is. Is that He chose to. And we can emulate Christ. We can be like that. We can choose to do good even when others do bad to us. The Bible says, the Bible teaches us, um, I can't recall where it's at now, but it says, love your enemies. Okay? When you love your enemies, that is basically saying, feed your enemies, do for your enemies, and expect them to turn on you. That's why they're enemies. So if we know that people are the worst kind of folks, and we know that every person has it in them to have a bad day or a bad moment or a, an anxious event, something goes wrong, they may not be very uh, receptive to your love in a moment, they might even bite your head off. You don't know what kind of day that they have had, but yet they still might bite your hand. Okay? The 
The Bible teaches us to love anyway. Even those that are close friends, someone you trust, they might share in the fellowship with you, and they might also turn against you. But do it anyway. Over in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, 3 through 7, start in verse number 3. Isaiah 53, verse 3 says, He, being Jesus, and this is Isaiah prophesying about this, foretelling about this several hundred years before it happened. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not even open his mouth. Jesus knew what was coming and he didn't say a word. He didn't go against it. He accepted it. He allowed it and he took it. And He took it because of us. He did it for our freedom, for our forgiveness. He was pierced for for our sin, our transgressions. He was crushed under the weight of that separation between Him and God. He did it for us. He knew it was going to happen and He did it anyway. When He was in the garden and He prayed, God, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thine be done. And then he drank that cup down to its bitterest dregs, knowing that it was separation from God that was coming. And he did it anyway. He knew what was going to happen. He knew the betrayal of his friend. He was about to have supper with his closest friend. He knew that one of them was going to sell him for 30 pieces of silver. He knew that another one was going to swear to God that he didn't know him. Not one time, but three times. He knew that they were all but John going to flee away as he toted the cross up the mountain. Some stranger named Simon would help him tote it, but none of his friends would. He knew all that was going to take place. He knew his mom was going to have to dry up his blood after they stripped his flesh from his skin, from his body. He knew that all that was going to take place, and he did it anyway. He knew the betrayal that he was going to feel. He knew. He was crushed by knowing, and he did it anyway. Punishment that brought us peace. The punishment that we deserved was on Him. And by all of the wounds that He took, we were healed. But you know, even though He took that, it was like a total issue today. I said, you know, he, when He died, uh, and we'll get to this later on and before a VBS starts, but when they buried Him, It says that he was placed among the rich. He didn't have a lot, even though he owned everything. Here on earth, his earthly possessions were not vast. He even had a borrowed tomb, but that's all right. He borrowed that tomb from that rich guy named Joseph, and he didn't need it for long. That's why it was borrowed. You know? I ain't going to use it but for a few days. So Yeah, we'll just borrow one of them. We ain't got to buy it. Got enough out of there. And he did it. He conquered it. He he defeated sin. He did it for us. Yeah, goosebumps. I'm like, all right. Yay, Jesus. <sighs> he knew all that was going to take place. But you know, even though he knew the betrayal was coming, he could always remember at the same time with the same mind that he was going to conquer death that he was going to rise victorious, that he was going to triumph over it all. He knew that he was going to wind up at the right hand of God. 
Just like we know by reading the whole book that even though our friends might forsake us or Satan might tempt us uh, through Jesus, we shall safely reach the goal. Uh-huh. What song is that? He's the lily of the valley. Mm-hmm. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me so, or through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. Because he's the lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Now I could have sang that. Don't make me threaten y'all with songs. Um, anyway. I'm I'm a little snotty today. It probably wouldn't be good. Turn, if you will, over to the book of John. Let's go to John chapter 13. We will start in verse number 11. John 13, 11. Now, here we find that Jesus was washing his disciples' feet, which was a a very curious role for the teacher and the distinguished leader to do for his followers, for his disciples. Um, For the the leader to wash and serve uh, the other's feet, that that was unheard of. And that was a teaching, a lesson of humility. And even Judas got his feet washed. Even though Jesus knew he was about to betray him, stab him in the back. So he says here in verse 11, For he knew who was going to betray him, and that is why he said not everyone was clean. So he knew as he was washing the feet of the disciples. They they asked him, you know, uh, Peter was like, um, you know, you you wash my feet? And Jesus said, uh, you may not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will realize. And they said, Master, you can't wash my feet. He said, well, if I don't, then you have no part in me. Peter said, well, then in that case, uh, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus asked him, he said, have you taken a bath today? said, yes. Well, then only your feet need to be washed. Because they had been walking through the uh, sandy, dusty land, and uh, you know they had on sandals. They didn't have, uh, uh, I guess, closed-toed shoes back then. Their ankles were nasty, so they needed their feet washed. So anyway, on down in verse number 12, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place, and he said, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set an example that you should do as I've done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So do as I have done for you. That's what Jesus is teaching. And then in verse number 18, he says, about the one who is not clean. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the passage of Scripture that says, He who shared my bread has turned against me. And that's back in Psalm 41. He who shares this bread with me has raised his heel up against me. There's that same verbiage that was used back in Psalm 41.9. And in verse 19 he says, I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. So Jesus is getting them ready for the service at hand. There is coming a day when God is going to call you to speak, to go, to do. 
And the one that you serve is going to lift their heel against you. They are going to go against you. They're going to strike against you. And Jesus wanted you to know this ahead of time so that when that betrayal happens, you will know that He already knows. He knew it was going to happen. And He's already told you that it's going to happen. But He asks us to serve Him anyway. Everywhere you go to preach the gospel is not going to be receptive. There may even be people that try to kill you because of what you're preaching. You know what you do? You preach it anyway. I knew that no matter where God called me to preach, it would not always be found uh, as a pleasing thing as long as it's, it's spoken in truth through the Word of God because conviction happens. And when you stand in the pulpit and you look out on the congregation, you know sometimes it is not well received when God gets to speaking about matters of sin. And there have been times where you cannot take it personally when people reject God's teaching. Because you spoke with boldness the truth of the Word of God. And those people did not receive it. They basically raised their heel against you. Not to the extent that they would sell the preacher for 30 pieces of silver, you know, but they could just say stuff. They could hurt the cause of the church. And yet at the same time be church members. We know that betrayal happens. These kids that come on VBS, they might have already experienced betrayal from a parent. The one that God trusted those, those parents to raise these kids, to love these kids. It's not just a responsibility. It is an awesome opportunity to love on a child. But sometimes that is betrayed through various things. Selfishness, um, just pure immaturity, um, and just, just being an awful person. And those kids are like, is this... Is this what I am to strive to be? Little kids want to be happy. They want to be loved on. They want to be, be cherished. They need somebody to be their champion. And sometimes they get betrayed at home. And they feel alone. And we have been given an, a, a unique opportunity to love on these kids. And to help them feel as special as they are. You know, we can... We can absolutely shower love on these kids and they feel absolutely awesome. This little chick on the church fan a while ago, I know her name, but I choose to call her Breadstick. Alright? And she does not remember when she got that name. But as a baby, my daughter looked at her fat little toes and said that they looked like those breadsticks in the Chex Mix. And they did. So I remind her of that. She said, my name is not Breadsticks, but she loves it when I call her Breadsticks. Because it is personal, it is unique, and it, it means that it, it's not a generic interaction that I'm having with her. It is something unique to just her. And we named her brothers and sisters. You know? One of them's a pixie stick, one of them's a broomstick. Um, what was, yeah, her daddy was a dipstick. Because he works on cars, not. So, you know, we just named them all. Oh, yeah. No. And it's just little moments like that where we might can ease the betrayal that they have felt. You know, the song that we sing so often is that, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. What if they find that friend in us? You know, when, when they get an extra cookie at VBS and, and somebody, you know, Brother Jim come over there and like slipping them some contraband, you know, it's an Oreo. Like, here you go. And they feel special. Like, he likes me. He didn't give everybody an extra cookie. Well, yeah, it's because you ate them really fast and you're a pig. So, you know. But if you feel special, then that's all that matters, right? 
somebody gets to be a line leader or, or, or they answer a question right and they're praised because of it. I mean, all these little things fight the betrayal that is absolutely going to happen in their life. You know, these kids are going to experience this. But y'all, they could experience the love of Jesus at church. You know, the opposite of all that betrayal. Have a positive experience. And I'm just excited about, about the opportunity that, that's coming up. Jesus knew that there was going to be betrayal. We know, we know, if you don't listen, we know that as hard as we try, there's going to be some kids that raise their heel against us during VBS. There's going to be some that act like wild mustangs. Almost run over the preacher. Y'all, last night we was at the ball field, and I thought, this kid looked just like, just like this little boy that had come to VBS back a few years ago, but he looked like he had not grown at all. It's because it wasn't him. But I was fully convinced that it was him, he just had not grown. And I convinced my wife. Well, she went up to his mama at the ball field and was like, uh, what'd you, how'd the interaction go? Tell it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So accidental evangelism is a thing. <laughs> and it's okay. And y'all, this is kind of funny because Wyatt's little team was not doing so well. And they needed a spark. So I wanted to be that spark. New inning was coming up. Wyatt was up to bat. I said, let's go, Wyatt! Let's get sexy! Because that was out of this show that we watched, Impractical Jokers. And uh, he went right up there and got hit by the first pitch and got on base. Boom! Runner on first. They wound up scoring three runs that inning. I was like, no about a rally cry. All right. But man, it just seemed like the tension was just eased. <laughs> and Paul had seen that show too. He loved it. He was like, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it was great. Encouragement could come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, ways and sounds. So be prepared as we go into VBS. God may call on you to uh, to fight betrayal in a unique way. To love in a unique way. And I want you all to remember, when things go awry, Jesus said, I told you about this beforehand so that when it happened you would know and not be overwhelmed, not be surprised, be able to handle it with grace. Think about that as we pray for everyone on our prayer list. We pray for all the ones that are in the middle of a storm and receiving bad news. Um, we need to be reminded and remind them also of the hope that we have in Jesus. Even though their body may betray them or the world may betray them, Jesus will not. And that's very hard for some folks to understand. So let's just do our best to help them. Y'all got any questions?